Hello everybody, I'm just doing a little update of my locomotive wheels which I'm reclaiming from some old um, riding car wheels. Uh, I've got all my bushes made now, they're made from step bushes, I'm going to lock tight those bushes in because the bore on these wheels is too big by a sixteenth so I've got to reduce it down. So I'm going to put a step bore in the bore. I'm going to set them up in my self-centering chuck, take this flange off to bring it down to my outer diameter for my flanges, which is 4 and 5 eighths, and then uh, bore them out for the bush, for the step bush, lock tight the bushes in, and then I can, uh, once I've got this flange off, I can then turn them round, and then I can machine this recess for my imitation cast wheel look-alike insert. There's my sample one. I've got all those cut now ready. So I've just then got to machine this recess out to the appropriate diameters and uh, final bore the bush to, to my axle sizes which is 11 sixteenths. Then I can machine the tread on while I've got it in that position and then uh, once I've done all that, I'll put the radiuses on the flange. So I'll uh, I'll do another clip as and when required, a little bit further on. So I'll see you on my next clip then. Okay, I've got it bored out to diameter required for my bush. I'm just going to put some uh, Loctite 603 that's oil tolerant. Just got to push that bush in now. That's it, got the bush in now. We're just going to take a skim across the face, and then uh, that's that one finished for this operation. Do all the rest of those wheels the same operations now. Then I can turn them round to the other side and bore them out. Catch you on my next clip then. Moving on to the next part of my wheels now. And I'll, I've got some information that I need to talk to you about before uh, in, a, in a minute when, I've, when I get around to it. 
I don't bring my book into workshop because when I'm working with cast iron, especially cast iron, the graphite gets everywhere and your fingerprints go all over your book. So what I do, I just photocopy relevant page and bring that into my workshop. Right, so where I'm up to with my wheels then, I left you last time where I'd made the bushes because I'm recycling some old riding car wheels where the flanges have broke and I've made some inserts to make them look like a cast wheel. I've made all my inserts now and they're over on bench. Um, I've just painted underneath them before I fitted them with some red oxide because once they're fitted you can't get to the bare metal. So I've put a couple of coats of red oxide on and this one which I'm calling my prototype I've got this insert fitted now at paint's dried and what I've used is three 4BA brass count head, countersunk head screws. And what I've done, I've, I've drilled and tapped them into the wheel. I've opened the insert out to the clearance and I've put a half, I'm calling it a half a countersink in the insert so that when my screws go in with the lock tight, the head protrudes approximately at approximately a half the depth of the head and then once I'd got them tightened up and locked tight it in I've just machined the heads off so it it makes the slot in the head disappear and then they just look like rivets and when that's painted you'll not notice so and also while I'm talking about my wheels the bores I've got them on all those finished now and instead of marking each one up individually I've made a little plug gauge to the same diameter as my axles and I've made it I'm calling it a semi interference fit it's tight but it's I can turn the wheel and I've made it especially like that because when I'm quartering my wheels I, w I want them to be tight but I want to be able to move them to the relevant position then once the Loctite goes off and the axle, I can then belt and brace it by drilling halfway into the axle and halfway into the wheel and putting a 1 8th or 5 30 second pin three quarters away into the wheel. That'll belt and brace it so it doesn't spin then. Right, going back to this information then, and I'm bringing this up because there's a, there's a chap over in America, his name's Joe, and his channel's called My Heap. Um, I think he's setting up a, a new workshop in his basement and he's got some interesting videos if you want to take a look at him. And what he's done is he's ordered this book from UK and he's following, he's following, following me in the book as I'm doing it in practice in these videos. So... I'm purposely coming, going, going to tell you about any information that might have changed or might not be relevant because if somebody's following it, I don't want them to think that I'm just working to book if something's changed. Now the wheels, back to back measurement, so imagine that's your wheel with another one at this side, back to back. That measurement's changed to 11, 11, 4 and 11 sixteenths from 4 and 5 eighths. And also, the profile of the wheel is no longer parallel and at right angles to the flange. Now, there's a lot of different information on this on the internet. And the best I've come up with is this one from Cheltenham Society of Model Engineers. And their information back to back for a 5 inch gauge is 4.687, which is 4 and 11 sixteenths. Now that's the measurement I'll be working to, and all these new measurements for the tapers on the tread and the flange. Maximum 3 degree taper on the tread and a 20 degree taper on the flange. Now, when I did my battery electric loco last year, I've made my wheels on that. To these dimensions and they work fine on my track 
on my local track. Uh, by the way, if you've not seen me make that, I made it from a load of unused items and scrap out of my workshop. All I had to buy was a controller and uh, a couple of motors, if you've not seen me do that. Take a look back. And I found these measurements work fine on, the, on, on my local track. Now, whether it differs in different countries or not, I, I don't know, but when you get to this part of the book, double check your information on that. So, I'm just about to put this in now and make a start on machining treads. And I've explained how I've done that, Jake. I've just put an M8 bolt in to hold it in with an oversized washer on. And then uh, all my wheels will be repeatable in this jig and they're running within <coughs> half a thou. Just ignore that washer wobbling. The actual face and the diameter is running within half a thousand now and they're all repeatable. So uh, I'm mentioning this jig because in the book it's a slightly ver different variant of this. The wheels that you get for the sweet pea when you buy them, they're just cast wheels and there's two holes in them at 180 degrees opposite each other through the centre line and their jig that they make in the book locates in through those two holes to clamp it to the jig so mine's different. I'm just clamping it through that centre centre hole now. Right, so I'm going to get a tool sorted out, then I'm getting my tool post, and I'm going to make a start doing these treads now to them new dimensions. So I'll catch you at a, I'll reconvene at a, another appropriate point.